What is going on you guys? Welcome to the video. So I'm pretty excited for this one. We're actually doing some work to Alexis's bike today. Woo, it's time. Today we're gonna be doing something that I've never done before and we're gonna be installing the tubeless system. Boom. I give their packaging like a 10 out of 10. Like, it is super well designed and super flashy, I guess. We got these from Rocky Mountain, so shout out to them. They literally came within two days. <laughs> so as a lot of you know, I installed the Lucioli tubes on my bike, so it's gonna be cool to run these in a comparison side by side and see what we prefer over the time. I mean, based off just what I've heard and what you've told me, so you can pretty much just run your PSI super low and don't have to worry about getting like a pinch or a flat. But like in comparison, I don't really know what would be the advantage over Lucioli's, I guess. Okay. Rather than, I guess, price and maybe installation. I feel like these might be a little bit easier to install. We'll find out. I mean, I know that these work as far as like the air. Water, fire, air, and dirt. Like it converts the tire to no longer having tubes. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to worry about a pinch tube. Yeah. Or a, yeah. Which is very rare with a Lucioli setup, but still, if you get a puncture, you have to pull it out and patch it. Versus the tubeless system, what can you do? Plug the tire. Yeah, you can use tire plugs. So you keep a little plug kit with you, and this is kind of a foolproof system. As long as you install it right, it's a lot more convenient to install a plug than it is a patch. So that's a big benefit to the tubeless system as well. I don't believe this is recommended for a DOT use, but a lot of people do it. What happens is you fill up this inner tube to 120 PSI and it pushes this red tube against the bead of the tire and creates a seal. So that's actually what makes it tubeless. It's not the tire getting pushed against the wheel like some people think, it is the tubeless system being pushed against the bead of the tire. You need to make sure that everything is clean, everything's tidy, so you do get that nice seal. They say that you shouldn't install these with used tires, but as long as the bead is intact and you can get it cleaned up, I don't think you'd have a problem. But oh, we're not doing that today. We have uh, two brand new Tusk D-Sport tires to install. I'm excited so. for this. Yeah, you definitely have a better tire option than mine. <laughs> this tire is definitely clapped. Oh, it's, it's beat. <laughs> it's beyond life. Now, I do know that this is a little bit different than the Moose system. A little bit? Well, I mean, yes, but... I just more meant like the Moose system is another alternative that people use. Okay, yeah. Moose, Lucioli, tubeless, and just the traditional tube or heavy duty tube, that's really the options. I mean, Moose is still the standard in hard enduro, I would say, just because it really is foolproof. There's- And that's the foam. Yeah, exactly. It's the big foam freaking pool noodles that you gotta fight to install. I'm sure once you get the hang of it, it's all right. But for road use, it's a no. They're not good road performers. It can be borderline dangerous at speeds. So that is why we opted for the Lucioli on my bike and the tubeless and hers. I'm just willing to trade off the convenience of being able to adjust pressure because that's the one thing with the moose. You're stuck with whatever mm. moose you can get. I mean, you can drill them out. A lot of people drill them out to get them a little bit softer, but you're stuck with the compound that you get. So if you get like a plushy, that's anywhere from like seven PSI to eight PSI feel. So you can get different hardnesses of the moose depending on your terrain. They break down over time. I'm sure a lot of people have different experiences with how hard they ride and how well you take care of them. You have to lube them, et cetera. So- And those are pretty hard to install. From what I've seen, yeah. yes. Like I said, once you do something a couple times, you get better at it. But I think the first couple times it will be a struggle if you don't have the proper tools, like the Rabicon to set up or the Harbor Freight alternatives. So I think this is something that pretty much anybody can install and you're gonna give it a shot today. Me? Yeah. I'm gonna do it all? I'll do the rear and then you can do the front. Okay. But we should also open this up and see what's inside. Boom, we have rim tape. So this is gonna go around the middle of the wheel to cover the spokes and give a little buffer from chafing. And we have the install plate. So you install these a little bit different. You kind of push the wheel into the tire and this acts as a guide to do that. So that's pretty cool that's included. Cool. You also have the famous wheel stickers. You gotta let everybody know that you have tubeless and you're not messing around, you're bougie. 
And then there's instructions. Holy crap. Once again, I gotta give a shout out to the packaging. These instructions are freaking insane. This is the most detailed instructions in you know real English that I've ever seen. What do you think, we ready? I'm ready. All right, let's give her a shot, guys. Let's do this. Stinks. What do you have, 100 PSI in there? It's moving it out. This thing is crusty. I'm gonna reuse these tires. Pretty good quality. Not saving that tire or tube, so to the burn pit it goes. Pretty ghetto. So guys, upon further inspection, we're missing a spoke. That's awesome. A, we could either wait to install this, or B, we can just send it until next tire change, and that's exactly what we're gonna do. It gave us this nice little rim plug in the kit, which actually fit perfect in that spoke hole. It was meant to be. We'll go with that. So guys, we have the rim tape, the new stuff is red, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna do one full rotation in the center, and then you're gonna overlap to just get it on the shoulder of one side, and then the shoulder of the opposing side. So you should in total get about three wraps. And this is just a barrier for the bladder. This doesn't have anything to do with sealing the spoke holes off or anything. This is just strictly a cushion for the bladder. All right, so we're just gonna get right into this. No problem with sticking. Hopefully this new stuff is even better. I know it used to be black. So now you're gonna kind of ride up on the shoulder here just a little bit. You don't want it to go in this flat spot right here, but just on the shoulder there, you can see the difference in the two materials there. So about a quarter inch of a difference, and you're gonna do that on both sides. So that is three full wraps, both shoulders, and we have a little bit of excess. I was not expecting that. I'm gonna save some for a future install. Some people I've heard have used duct tape and some other Gorilla tapes, but it's nice that they include this and I had zero issues sticking to this old nasty rim. Just make sure it's clean and free of chemicals. Now one thing that I did forget to mention, before you do that you need to drill out the low pressure chamber, which is also the rim lock to a 7 16 equivalent. Mine was already that big, so I did not have to drill that. And then our valve stem is on the opposite side. Now per the tubeless instruction, like I mentioned earlier, they want you to do it in between spokes four and five away. I don't wanna drill an unnecessary hole in the wheel if we don't have to, so we're gonna run it like this. Don't pay any attention to the missing spoke. That doesn't matter, it's irrelevant. Back over to the stand. Here are the tires of choice. We got a 130 big meats. Decently flexible, so I think we're gonna be able to install this fairly easy. Fingers crossed. All right, so what you're gonna do here, take your caps off. Remember that low pressure is blue, high pressure is red. 
So we're gonna go ahead and take this inner bladder out of here. So you wanna line your stems up and then you can reinsert the tube back into the bladder. When you have those two lined up, go ahead and start on the rimlock side, push the stem through, hand tighten down that nut. Now you're gonna have to start working a thing. I'm gonna go ahead and lube this thing up a little bit. Use an armor roll or a silicone type spray. It's good to get it on the rotor because then it gives you better stopping performance. And now is where the tire spoons come into play. Just use common sense. Be careful while doing this. You're going to have to stretch it over the wheel a little bit, but small bites is always king. We'll go ahead and just thread this on a little bit to stop it from popping back out. Once again, little bites. And boom, we'll tighten down our stem nut. And now we move over to the tire. So we're gonna take our little mounting plate and we will put this just like that. And then you're gonna push down and get that wheel in there. So this is gonna take a few spoons and a little bit of elbow grease. So we're gonna start with the rim lock on the bottom. To get this thing started, you're gonna push down on the tire to widen the opening. And you wanna get this thing seated inside of there. And you're gonna do that by using the spoons. So you're gonna get the spoon in. You're just gonna continue to work this thing on here. And boom, now we got a good start. We lost a spoon into oblivion. Keep repeating that process. And just like that, we have it slipped on. A lot easier than I was expecting. So let's move over to the stand again. Goodbye, guide. Per the tubeless instructions, it wants you to start the opposite of the rim lock, so that is what we will do. I'll have the links to all this stuff in the description. I'll go ahead and put that B-Buddy in there. That'll just kind of help keep that in the drop center. And you gotta be very careful to not damage the bead of the tire. So we are almost there. One more last little bite. Oh. Satisfaction. Repeat the process. So we're gonna head back over here. We're gonna make sure that our opposing bead is in the drop center. We can throw in a bead buddy to make sure that's happening. Well, we have a little bit of tension over here. Little bites go a long way with this. Use your head, use your toes. Put that sharp spoon right in your belly button. Kyle XY, and we are right there. Boop. Sweet. Woo. So that is the tubeless install. Went in a little bit tighter than I expected. Slight damage to the bead there. I don't know if that's gonna affect us at all. Hopefully the inner bead is not damaged. We're just gonna poke that down and forget that it ever happened. I think that's the biggest difficulty is you can't get that tire pushed all the way down in the drop center because you have that bladder in the way. So it's gonna be tighter than a normal install. Per the instructions, they say to use soapy water around each side and then fill it up with air. We shall see whether this is a successful install or not. Oh, it's a good sign. We got a big ass air compressor, but I still don't know. I think it's gonna stop at about 90. Yeah, we're peaking at about a 91.5, so we're gonna have to break out the bike pump. About 120 right there. 119, so we're right at 120. We have no air in the low pressure side yet, so we will chooch her up. A little bit more to make sure we have a seal. Yeah, about 20 PSI. Let's go ahead and tighten this thing down to until I feel like it's foot pounds. Well guys, that wraps up my first ever tubeless install. So we're gonna get this thing all cleaned up. Get rid of that silicone grease. A lot of people use armor roll. I had some Murphys that I normally use, but I'm not sure if it's compatible. I don't think it would make that big of a difference. A little bit more difficult than a normal tube install just because of that drop center issue. Obviously the softer tire you have, the better. For a DOT tire, 
it was not that bad. The Tusk D Sport is just flexible enough. So pretty happy overall. Don't forget to torque your rim lock down and back your valve stem nut out to the cap. You never wanna have that tightened down. You want a little bit of wiggle room in that. So I'm just gonna leave this thing overnight, see if it holds pressure, see if it leaks off. Hopefully we're good. And then we'll have Alexis do the front. I'm excited to see how she does it, but we're not gonna be able to do it today. So we will pick up in the next clip. Well, I had to wrap up the video right here because with the Lexus's install, we had like 40 minutes of footage and that was just too long for the same stuff over and over again. But it was pretty cool seeing her do it. I don't want to give away too much of the whole experience, so I will be uploading it in a separate video. I tried to make this one a little bit more educational. I know there's plenty of videos out there, but it's cool to see someone doing it for the first time and the experiences that I had. I've changed out a lot of tires at this point, so it's really gonna come down to your spooning techniques and skills. The only real difficult part, like I said several times, was getting that opposing bead in the drop center to make it easier to slip the tire over. Slow and steady really does win the race with these things, so just take your time, be patient, and it's about technique. At this point, it's been about four days, and the rear one that I did is still holding air just fine. I was definitely worried that it'd leak off after only a couple days, so being my first install, I think we nailed it. But as always, a lot of knowledge comes from the comment section, so please leave a comment down below if you have experience with this system. If you don't and you have any questions about it, there are a lot of people that have been running this system for a very long time because it has been out for a very long time. So for my case, only time will tell. We'll see how this performs over the next year. And who knows, maybe I'll start running it in all my bikes. Once again, links down below. The website is live. If you guys want some merch, we finally got that done. But more on that later. Too much going on in one video. If you made it this far, I appreciate it. Always remember to live free, adventure daily, and we'll see you in the next one.